one. This happened about two years ago. We were sold out and housekeeping was trying to flip rooms as quickly as possible. Karen uses mobile to check in, but her room isn't ready. She has a king reserved. I offer her a room with two beds that is ready, but she refuses and demands why her room isn't ready because she used mobile check-in. I let her know, of course, that mobile check-in is still a request. She leaves and says she'll come back later. A few minutes later, she calls and screams and demands to speak to a manager. My supervisor bumps someone, lets her check in. The next day, she comes down, screams at me in the lobby, says she is going to call corporate complain and specifically mention me by name. Thankfully, my GM of all people happens to be walking through the lobby during her tirade and witnesses this, and even tries to speak with her and give her his card. But now that she's in full Karen mode, nothing is going to stop her from speaking to corporate directly. Because my customer service skills are poor and I need more training. So the review comes in and Karen was true to her word, and apparently it was like the nastiest review. To be honest, I chose not to read it because I have anxiety and depression and can ruminate over things, and I really didn't want that negativity in my life. It did, however, prompt a few execs to come over and give me a hug. That's how bad it was. As per protocol, customer care did reach out to the property, but my FOM did defend me and basically told them that even though Karen was checked into a room right after she complained, she continued to abuse the staff. I did cry a little bit, but life goes on and I moved on. Unbeknownst to me, Karen gets a generic give us another try for a better review comp slip. Because that's hospitality for you and books another stay with us six months later. Unbeknownst to Karen, I was never fired or even written up because of her shenanigans. Because that's hospitality for you and 90% of our job is putting up with bullshit. No matter how well she slept at night thinking I was. So on that fateful day, I had actually graduated to phones at that point, and was only doing backup front desk. My co-worker rang for me, and I headed up, and I see a woman with her back turned. It should be noted that this Karen did not have the typical Karen haircut, so I didn't recognize her right away. When I ask if she needs assistance, she turns around, I recognize her right away, and she recognizes me. And the look on her face is pretty fucking awesome. She is in complete shock that I'm still there and I'm not fired, even though she spoke to corporate and mentioned me directly by name. It's all in her face. So our exchange goes something like this. Hi, how may I assist you? Yes, I need a microwave sent to my room. Sure. I smile really big. May I get your last name? Bitch face. And your first name? Karen. Okay, Miss Bitchface, one microwave coming right up. May I assist you with anything else? She gives me a long, dirty look. No, thank you. And stomps off. I pretended I didn't know her because I didn't want her to think she got under my skin. And she was just one of many guests, and I'm sure it made her furious. I'm glad that she saw that her temper tantrums and ugly review didn't ruin someone's life and get them fired from their job, like she thought it would. Although, sure, it's not the first time she has tried. Fuck you, Karen. Another happy ending. I graduated from the front desk to the accounting department where I worked in a basement, and no one came to see me. It was awesome. And I hope I can go back soon. 2. I quit my hotel job back in the beginning of February, prior to the shutdown and shelter orders here in Oklahoma. I decided to wait to look for another job because there was going to be an event to honor my father at the school he taught biology and coached baseball since before I was born. It was beautiful, wonderful, and unfortunately, posthumous. He passed away last year on the 1st of March. The first day and opening game of the school's baseball season and the dedication of the field in his name was held this year on the first day and opening game of the baseball season. I didn't want to be in a situation where I would have to choose between working a new job and missing this event, or making this at the expense of the job. That just didn't seem fair to anyone. Then all this COVID stuff happened, and now it's even harder to get a job. But why did I quit, you ask? That's simple, and has two parts. The manager is also the owner. 
but is more interested in his car dealership in another state and doesn't want to get a manager who can focus on the property for the majority of the time that he's not there is the first half. Second, for the last six months of my tenure there, I'd been working the morning shift, which had been a blessing for me, since I would actually have time together with Luquiza Mita and our children in the evening. Or for times when my wife was performing in the theater, I could look after the kids while she was out. Morning shifts also made it easier for me to take care of the hotel's AR billings, where previously I had two hours to get all the invoices organized and sent out before business closed for the day. Why do I go into this detail? The boss decided that he wanted me back on evenings. That's just not compatible with my family anymore. We'd already adjusted to this. My father had helped with the kids when Loquiza Mita and I were occupied in the evenings, and there's not really anyone else here to help with them. I told this to the boss and his response really disappointed me. He just didn't want me on mornings, but he was saying he needed me before checkouts to solve problems before they were harder to fix. He was willing to offer me nights instead, for the differential, which was not an option. As my three years in warehouse distribution center loading, and several years in hotels prior, has in my opinion, ruined my kids' sleep schedules because they want to be up when daddy gets home. I had three days left in my schedule for the week, when he told me that day that the inspector said I wasn't keeping up the breakfast enough. I apologized to the inspector for the breakfast the following morning, and he said it wasn't my fault. He saw I was all over the place handling checkouts, putting salt on the sidewalks and working the food. But he did wonder where the breakfast attendant was. We didn't have one. So the inspector told me to my face I'm doing a good job, but my boss isn't happy with how it's going suddenly. Things kind of turned around on me here. This is when I knew I would be quitting. I told my wife and she was upset. I think I'm going to stay out of hotels for a while. I can handle irate or troublesome customers all day long. I can deal with catty and snide co-workers. But when your superiors don't have your back, it's time to get out. The more I think of it, I probably wouldn't mind getting back into a hotel. The problem with this is the COVID-19 shutdown, the economy is spiraling. A major part of Oklahoma industry is oil, natural gas and related businesses. With oil prices currently being cheaper per barrel than a Netflix subscription, this is going to take the bottom out from under the hospitality industry in Oklahoma. If something doesn't happen soon. 3. Background I worked at a full-service, semi-luxury property before the COVID-19 pandemic. During all of this, my position, sales and catering coordinator, was suspended, and I was asked to transfer to a smaller, mid-range property that is a different brand. I've been here for about a month, well adjusted at this point. This guest stayed with us the first week I was at this property and is now back. He is a 30-something year old man from Asian descent with broken English, but is very aware of how to annoy the living hell out of someone. I'm in the back office, which is literally two steps from the desk. I have four rooms in the house, currently working a 7am to 11pm shift. I had 30 checkouts today, so I am surrounded by laundry. I hear the front doors open, and before I can drop my king-fitted sheet, I can hear the man say, Hello, hello, hello! All before I turn the corner, which was only four seconds later. When I walk up front, I smile to greet him, and he is now pressing persistently on the bell. He asks for the rate tonight. Sixty-nine dollars plus tax. I need triple A discount. Sure, sixty-one ten. What rate for tree night? Before I could even change in the number of digits from 1 to 3, he's asking for 4 nights. 4 nights would be 265.40. That would be your total for the stay. What's the total with tax? I just look at him. That's the total for the whole stay, sir, tax included. He looks at me. What's the rate per night with taxes for one night? I just look at him. Tax rate is 11.75%. Ah, that high. So I get him checked in. He chooses the two double beds to save him six dollars per night. Cool. He goes upstairs with his wife, and I go in the back to folding laundry. I get my king flat sheet lined up with my king fitted sheet and I hear it, Hello, hello! And he hits the bell. I peek my head up front. Yes, sir. We need new room. Bad air quality in that room. Air quality? This is the first for me. Yeah, dust everywhere. 
Sure, no problem. I change his room, remake his keys, change his reg card, and send him on his way. All is good. 210 has bad air quality, and he's now in 212. I hear the dryer buzz. I roll my cart to the dryer, unload it, and wheel it to the lobby. As I'm approaching the desk, I see that he's back. He sees me coming his way, and I'm sure he hears me too, and he calls out, Hello? And rings the bell. Yes, sir, how's the new room? I force through my teeth. Still bad air quality. There's dust. I need room on third floor. We actually have the third floor powered down right now, so those rooms are unable to be rented. The COVID-19 has affected business. We need room close to elevator, but not next to. We need room 214. That room is unavailable. It's actually rented right now. We need room 204. We need on this side of building. That room is at the very end of the hallway. Do you think the air quality is better there? I'm sort of being a smart ass at this point. He decides on 216. All is good. I change his reg card, remake his keys, and send him on his way. I switch the laundry from the washer to the dryer and go back in office area to begin folding another load, and you guessed it, he's back again, ringing the bell, shouting hello. He ended up asking to be switched back to room 210. I am ready to strangle this guy by now. In a hotel with less than 3% occupancy, I should be able to finish up laundry without all of the interruption. Two hours later, he comes to the coffee station. He gets three cups of hot water, drinks one, straight, and takes two up to his room. He comes back down and makes another cup of hot water and drinks it. Throwing away yet another cup, he comes over to the store by the desk and picks up every single drink and asks the price of each. I try to direct him to the price list on the wall, but he insists on asking me each price. Oh, that costs too much money, he says. What's the cheapest? I point to the 20 ounce Cokes, which are 325. He then reaches for the brown bag, stuffed behind all of the sodas, which happens to be my lunch and tries to open it. How much? Sir, that's my lunch, it's not for sale. He goes back to the coffee station, makes another cup of hot water, and drinks it. Twenty minutes later, he comes back down to the desk, asking for disinfectant for his room. He wants me to come and spray his bathroom with it. I explain to him that I'm the only person here, and I'm not permitted to go on the floors and into occupied guest rooms. He asks for disinfectant, pointing to floor cleaners sitting on the desk, tries to reach over the counter for it. I redirect him, tell him I'll find disinfectant for him. I explain that the rooms are disinfected when housekeeping services them. He insists on taking it upstairs. He goes upstairs and comes back to return it. I kid you not, as I'm typing this, he's approaching the desk, asking for the disinfectant because he forgot to spray his closet. Send help. Four. Heading into New Year's weekend on a Friday. Sold out, it's all hands on deck. The hotel I work at could use more than a facelift. We're branded with a well-known logo, and the expectations of our guests is head and shoulders above what we can offer. Still had B-list of celebs crash, because of the area. It's getting close to noon. Guests are starting to roll in. Normal holiday weekend mixed with a prep basketball tournament. It's busy AF. Bam, 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 and the power goes down. I take off towards the back of the hotel where the explosions came from. Engineering director in tow, a character in and of himself. We get toward the back corner of the property and smoke is piling out of the electrical room. There's a lone maintenance guy meandering about on his cell phone trying to explain to his boss what happened. He doesn't work for the hotel, he works for a temp AC company. The door to the electrical can't close entirely because the AC unit went down in July. Mind you, it's December 29. And the power supply to the two two-ton portable AC units runs from that room. Massive electrical cores, like Thor doesn't handle shit like that without gloves. Well, the reason smoke is pouring out of the electrical probably has something to do with the fire, now prancing about the back end of this drab death trap. I have to sprint back to my desk office to grab my phone, and I get EMS and fire on the phone and hand it off. I grab this kid, I say kid, he's 21, who works for the hotel, and I'm like, Hey, we need to evacuate the hotel, I'll need you to help. Kid's like, cool. 
and takes off sprinting to the courtyard and pool area, yelling, Everybody get out! There's a fire! I grab the kid and I'm like, Ew, not like that. As you can imagine, this is a circus already. The fire department arrives. They cut off the power grid. Apparently, it's an arc fire. I'm circling the hotel, each floor clearing the rooms, because, you know, some people don't take those alarms seriously, and see it as an opportunity to rub wet spots. The saving grace. The manager I reported to had already started calling to relocate guests, and secure our guests whatever hotel rooms were left in the area. At this point, we can't let any guests back into the hotel per local fire department, so they're relocated without their shit. We get a setup that works semi-well, redirecting people as soon as they pull into the parking lot. The maintenance guys are trying to get us back up and running, and here we go again. It's 7pm, pitch black. The fire department finally arrives. The maintenance guys flip the switch to turn us back on and... BAM 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 BAM! Another set of explosions and another fire. Way more people in the electrical room now. Guys coming out with burn marks from debris, fire shooting out the fucking doors. And we still can't close it because of the portable AC units. Back comes the fire department. After round two of fires, the marshal wants to speak to the GM. You know, the person in charge. The one who, at midnight, has left the hotel and is now at dinner with our VP. Instead of at the hotel, no big deal. Get home about 3am. The hotel is closed, taken off the power grid. Down for the foreseeable future. I start to realize we have no power. We work with daylight only. I get back to the hotel at 7am. We have people who, one, want their shit, two, will be checking in and or out today, and we don't have the computer. GM comes rolling at 11am. His first words in this post-apocalyptic Hotel 7 is, What's for lunch? There's no winning at this place. While the hotel was closed, they redid the parking lot. They found out after the parking lot was complete, there's no conduit in the ground, and had to tear up 400 yards of brand new parking lot. 5. Last summer I worked at a resort in Alaska. This was my first time working as guest services, and I had only been on the job for like two months when this happened. It was late at night, and I was alone at the desk due to some serious short staffing and two sick co-workers. I had a short line that I had just reached the end of when I welcomed the next guest, a fifty-something-year-old guy. He comes walking up to me with a very serious face and says, My roommate in building Y204 is dead. I was absolutely shocked and would have laughed if not for how incredibly grim his expression and voice were. I said, Okay, give me one minute, I'll be right back. And walked into the back office to find my manager, Lauren. She was sitting down and asked me what was up. I said, Hey, Lauren. A guest just came to the desk and told me his roommate died. He's in Y204. I'm not joking. I'm completely serious. She basically stared at me for a few seconds and then snapped into action and went to speak to the guest. She barely began to ask him if he was okay when he burst into tears, and she quickly ushered him into one of the back offices, before coming out and telling me to call 911. Now, as I said earlier, I'm all alone save for one supervisor who was on break at the time, and my manager who is consoling the poor guy in the back. The minute I connect with the 911 operator, a line forms in front of me, and the phones start ringing. I explain the situation to the operator who informs me she's going to have to ask me some questions that may seem odd, but she needs the answers to them. First it was basic stuff like male or female and how old was the person. Then she asks me if I'm sure the person is deceased. I told her that according to the person's roommate they are, but that's all I know. Now here's where things get really shitty because our resort is really isolated in the middle of the Alaskan wilderness. The nearest hospital is several hours away, and the operator needed to know if she could just send an ambulance to pick up the body, which would take a while, or if we needed a helicopter ASAP to potentially save someone's life. Because of this, she said that I needed to go to the body and make sure if they were really dead or not by attaching one of our AEDs and seeing what it said, following the instructions if they needed CPR. Another problem, our resort is huge, nearly 600 rooms and 26 separate buildings, 
spread out over 50 acres. The main lobby was at the complete opposite side of the resort from Building Y, where the body was. I told her it would take a few minutes for someone to get there, and they would call her back. Just in case, she dispatched an ambulance that was thankfully nearby and told me to go to the highway because it was dark by then and it's heavily forested where our resort is. I quickly went back to my manager and told her that someone needed to take an AED back to the room and hook it up to the body to double check their status and she, thank God, volunteered to do it. She grabbed the AED and trauma kit and ran out of the lobby past all the very concerned people still waiting in line, staring at the scene unfolding. Right as she got into one of our service vehicles, I remembered that someone still had to go up to the highway to flag down the ambulance. And now I was completely alone at the desk. I was kind of freaking out and wasn't thinking too clearly about how to resolve this. So I looked up at the line and said, I'm so sorry, we have a bit of a medical emergency, I'll be right back. And ran as fast as I could to catch her before she drove off. I told her about the ambulance and asked what I should do because... I was all alone with a line of people and phones ringing non-stop. She told me to pick a radio and start calling bell staff, security, public areas, and maintenance to see if anyone was available to help. I ran back into the lobby and got a hold of someone on the radio and told them what to do. By now, I was full of adrenaline and kind of freaking out when I realized I was still working and had to help the other guests still in line, staring at me in shock. I'll never forget how weird it is to go from running around dealing with a potential life or death situation and then flipping a switch and going back to checking guests in and scheduling wake-up calls for the Northern Lights. The people in line were thankfully sympathetic and weren't an additional problem for me to handle. After the line was gone, my supervisor came back from break and I explained everything that happened. She took another one of our UTVs, beefy all-terrain golf carts, and drove down to Building Y to check on Lauren and deal with the family that was still there. Before long, the hotel services manager and GM came to check up on me when they heard the news. Soon the ambulance came, picked up the body, yes, he was dead, and my manager and supervisor came back to the desk. My manager was visibly shaken and told me how she had to explain everything to the family members that were with him, move them aside and open the guy's shirt and attach the AED paddles, to his slightly still warm chest, power on the machine, and then wait for it to assess his heartbeat before declaring that no shock or CPR was advised. The hotel services manager brought all of the family up to the lobby's restaurant and bought them a bottle of vodka while the GM got them new rooms for the night. During all of this madness, I forgot that I had ordered some fish tacos from the restaurant for dinner and my GM put them on her tab because she felt bad for me when the waiter came to deliver them. That night was crazy. That whole summer was crazy. We had heat waves, wildfires, floods, blackouts, bears, and moose on property. And an active shooter situation. Best summer of my life. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Kowahu number 38. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Ah, right, we have reached the end of another recording session. Dinner is calling. It's talking to me now. I might be hallucinating. Don't worry about it. Uh, I've only half drunk this can of Mango Relentless. I will drink the rest. People in the chat are laughing about balls. My fault. Don't ask. You're going to have to be there. Ah, but don't worry. I'll likely do another recording stream and the balls will return. And with those sweet, sweet words, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.